Hi guys, welcome back to the desktop for another rules breakdown and this time I'm going to be doing Shadowrun 2nd Edition, the 1992 version of Shadowrun. Now, although it's very similar to the 1st Edition and there's only going to be a few changes to the rules, it was different enough that I do think it was worth its own video, especially as Shadowrun 2nd Edition is one of the occasions where the change to a rule system changed the way you played the game quite drastically. Because in 1st Edition, it was quite easy to shrug off damage in combat, so it was easy for Shadowrunners to become bullet sponges and very survival of survivable in combat, whereas combat was extremely more deadly in 2nd Edition which changed the way you played the game drastically. Uh, especially the way uh, healing was also uh, changed, so characters took a lot longer to heal. So in first edition, you would get damaged, you would heal up, but most of the time you could resist a lot of the damage. In second edition, when you got damaged, and it was far more likely you would get damaged, you would carry that damage for the entire adventure because you could never be healed of a wound more than once. You had to rely on hospital time or just ordinary bed healing. Anyway, let's go on with the breakdown. Now, skills in 2nd edition are very similar to 1st edition. If you flick on to page 68-69, we will see the skill success table and the skill web. And if we flip back to one of the pre-generated archetypes here, let's have a look at the gang member. Let's say we're making an etiquette roll. He has etiquette street at four, and he has a charisma of six. If we remember those, we flick over. So, he wants to make a street etiquette roll, and the Games Master decides it's an average target number, so a four. So we grab four dice, and we roll them. And he gets two ones, and two sixes. Well, ones don't matter unless you get all ones. If you roll all ones, then it's a critical failure, and something terrible happens. And as in first edition, sixes you reroll and add. So he gets a seven and he gets a ten. But we were only looking for fours, so he got two successes, so we succeeded. However, if he never had street etiquette and he was using his charisma to default to, we could look at the skill web here, and we could see etiquette, charisma goes through one, two pips which increases the target number by 2 for each pip it's going through. So the target number would be 8. But he had a, a charisma of 6. So if I grab 6 dice and we roll them. So we've got a fine collection of 1s, two, 2s and 3s there and one six. Now can he get a 2? He gets a 2, so he gets one eight. So he manages to succeed using his charisma defaulting. And that's how the skills work. You either just roll the skill against the target number defined by the Games Master, or you go through the skill web from another skill or from an attribute based on going up the target number going up by two for each pip you go through. Now, initiative is actually simplified somewhat. If we go to the character's sheet, we can see this character has initiative of 5 plus 1d6. So, we roll... 1d6, and we add 5 to it. So he gets uh, 2, so he goes in 7. But in case of larger skill rolls, so let's have a look through, we've got the mercenary here, who gets initiative of 6 plus 2d6. So we roll those, we get 7, we add 6 to it, so we have 13. Now the mercenary will go in 13, and then in 3. It goes down in steps of 10 in 2nd edition, instead of the rather strange 7 that it went down in 1st edition. So, when you roll over 10, you get to go a second time by subtracting 10 from your initiative, and highest roll wins. Now, combat. If I can avoid the shine on the page from the window. We can see that the mercenary here has a firearm skill of 6. If we turn to page 87, you can see base target number. To determine a weapon's base target number, check the distance to the target in meters and consult the weapon range table below. So we flick over and we can see different weapons. Now the Mercenary has a Ingram Valiant light machine gun. 
So a light machine gun has a short range of 0 to 20, medium range of 21 to 40, long range of 41 to 80, and extreme range of 81 to 150 meters. Now if we look back, let's say the target's 30 meters away, so that was medium. And we can see that shots against targets at short range have a base number of 4. Shots against target medium against the 5, long range at 6, extreme range against 9. So he's going to be rolling his skill of 6 against a target number of 5. However, flicking back to the mercenary, we can see that he has an external smart link. And um, he has smart goggles. So if we flick on to here, on page 90, we can see smart goggles, you receive a minus one modifier to skill rolls. So that takes his five back down to a four. If you add an integral uh, cyber link, um, sorry, cyberware smart link, it would be a minus two target number. So it would have taken it down to a three. Or for short range, it would have taken it down to a two. So he's firing his skill, six, against the target number of four because he has his smart goggles. And we're rolling that many dice. But we also have dice pools. Now these are determined at character creation or past that as an average of intelligence, quickness and willpower. I can't remember the formula off the top of my head, but you'll work that out during character creation. And the mercenary has a dice pool of five. Now he can use that um, either on his combat roll. So he could roll up to 11 dice because you can never roll more dice pool dice than you have in your skill. So if he was rolling his gunnery skill here, which is only four, he'd only be able to allocate four from his dice pool to roll eight dice. But he's got a skill of six in his firearms and a combat pool of five. So he could roll 11 dice. Now, you can also hold that back for adding to your body roll when you're hurt. But we'll come to that in damage. But let's say he's spending all of his points on this attack roll. So we're rolling 11 dice here. And we are looking for fours. And that is quite a terrible roll, as we've only got four successes. We rolled a six, so we can re-roll it. A 12, an 18, a 19. But that's not important. We only needed fours, and we've only got four successes. But he hits. There is no dodge skill in second edition. Now, we said the mercenary was firing his Ingram Valiant light machine gun, and the damage isn't listed on the archetype here, so we'll need to look it up. So we flick through to the gear section of the book. Here we go, around the 250s. And we're looking for weapons. Here we go. And we have the Ingram Valiant, which does 7S damage. So it's doing a serious wound already. Now, because he achieved more successes than he needed to hit, the damage stages up. So for every two successes he gets over what he needs, it stages up to another level. So that's taken up to a deadly wound. So it's doing seven deadly. Now, going back to the mercenary, he's going to be rolling his body of five to resist that. And he's going to need sevens. However, he's wearing an armored jacket, which has a ballistic rating of five. So we take five off that seven. So he actually only needs a two. So he is rolling his body of five against target number of two. So we are looking for eight twos. Well, obviously he can't get that on five dice, which is why he might want to use his combat pool. Now he'd spent it all on boosting his attack, but if he'd kept it back, He'd be able to use all of that, no matter how high it is, for defensive rolls you're allowed to allocate all of your dice pool. So let's say he uh, one mercenary is shooting another, the other one hasn't gone, so he's going to roll 10 dice. Now we need 8 twos or higher to be able to resist this down to nothing. And we roll, and we have a 1, but everything else is 2s or higher, so he has 9 successes. So because of his... Uh, armored jacket, he has managed to resist all of that damage. However, if he'd not kept his combat pool behind, he would have definitely taken a moderate wound, because he wouldn't have been able to lower it further than that. 
And if you'd rolled a number of ones, you wouldn't be able to reduce it either. But that's how damage works. You stage it up for extra two successes, and you stage it down for every two successes you get. Which is simplified from the first edition, where every weapon had its own staging number. In second edition, it's always two successes you need to go up and to go down. Health in 2nd edition is very similar to 1st edition. If we flip to the back of the book and look for one of the character sheets, which they should provide us. There we go. We have the condition monitors. And we have a number of boxes here. And as we take physical damage, we mark up the boxes. So we lose initiative and we our target numbers go up as we take light stun wounds or uh, light wounds, moderate wounds. Minus three for serious, and unconscious may be dead for a deadly wound. And stun damage carries on over, so you can end up in unconscious, but if you get overflow damage, so you're sitting at serious and then you get a deadly wound, it will carry on over to physical, and you will end up with a serious wound. Whereas if you've got serious and you take another serious, you'll be adding six boxes on, which will take you up to a moderate on your physical. And advancement. If we flip back to page 190, we can see that karma has now been split. You see, in first edition, you get karma, and you could spend it on improving dice rolls in play, or you could spend it on advancing your character. Now, in my experience, everybody just spent it on improving their character. Why hold points back for saving your character's ass during play when they could be better and hopefully avoid that anyway? So people would spend all their karma and have nothing left. However, 2nd edition forces you to keep some. One tenth of all karma earned goes into the character's karma pool. So the character has a karma pool which they can use to spend points from to reroll failures, avoid an oops, buy additional dice on a roll, and buy successes. Um, your good karma, however, is spent as pretty much 1st edition was. General skills cost two times the new rating, so if you're improving a skill up to level two, it's going to cost you four. Concentrations, so instead of buying firearms up, you're buying assault rifles up. It costs you 1.5 times the new rating, so 1.5 times two is three, so if you're buying a concentration up to two, it would cost you three karma. Specializations cost you one times the new rating, so... If you are specialized in AK-47 rather than just assault rifles, then it's going to cost you only two points to increase it to two. And languages cost you one times the new rating. And that's how karma works and advancement works. Obviously, you'll be getting money and you can buy uh, cyberware. You've got the same six essence points in second edition as you had in first edition. So you can buy cyberware up to that rating. But, basically, advancement is pretty much the same as in 1st edition. And that's a very brief rundown of Shadowrun 2nd edition. The rules are refined somewhat, the standard target number makes gameplay a lot faster. As I said, um, the removal of a dodge, so you've only really got your damage resistance roll, does make combat a bunch more deadly in 2nd edition than 1st edition, but it's a really good game and it's a lot of fun. Um, the rules were streamlined, I wouldn't consider it quite as classic as 1st edition, but I played a lot of 2nd edition Shadowrun in my day and really, really enjoyed it. Anyway, as always, thank you very, very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment below as that helps me out with the YouTube algorithm gods. But most of all, as usual, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.